so um, the warm-ups a 50 kilogram object moves to the right at three meters per second it collides and sticks with a 30 kilogram object that was stationary find the velocity after the collision we have two objects moving here so it's very likely that we will use the collision equation uh, that's the capital M capital V plus little m little v equals capital M V prime plus little m v prime but that is not a guarantee it is not a guarantee that uh, we'll use that equation today we are going to be um, learning a second equation that can work with situations involving two um, two objects but at this moment this is the only equation that we know so um, we have to figure out what we are told and what we need to figure out we are told this 50 kilograms <clears throat> okay that's a mass of some sort but we also have another mass over here so we're going to call this the capital M for the bigger mass and this the little m for the little mass this three meters per second which velocity will that be think about it for a second we have four V's to choose from which will it be Christian uh, little, v. little V Christian says do you agree with that Michael oh big V I sorry Michael do you agree sure, sure. it's the initial velocity of the larger object so yes that's going to be big V um, that's the only numbers I have what variable are we looking for Grant we are looking for little v so the find is little v so let's put in our numbers we have 50 moving to the right is a positive 3 we have a 30 for the small m <coughs> uh oh I don't have a little v oh the finding the velocity after the collision that's going to be v prime we don't have regular V listed here. Ethan? Zero. zero because it's stationary. That's implied then that we have 30 times zero. Okay, put the 50 back in for the capital M. The V prime. Hmm. Huh. What do we do with that? I, I have written down here that I'm looking for the little V prime. What do I put in for the big V prime? Well, it sticks to it so both objects are moving at the exact same speed afterwards so I can put little v prime for that one as well all right on the left hand side we have 150 on the right hand side we have 80 divide both sides by 80 and I get 1.875 meters per second for the velocity afterwards questions there number two at this time go ahead and read the story problem and figure out what each number is equal to in terms of uh, variables Alex, what is the 20? Uh, that would be uh, big M. Big M. Alex, what is the 10? Uh, big B. And Marco, what is the 14? Oh, that's the, the other end. Yep. <coughs> what is the 4, Marco? Oh, the 4 is the velocity for the 14. So we'll do the little v for that. Oh, yeah. Up oh, here's a 6. What's the six? Cherie. I'll come back to you. Ethan? Uh, did you say big V prime? Uh, yeah. 
Cherie, do you agree with that? Yep. Okay, now, before we substitute these things into the equation to find the, uh, the little v prime, we've got to make sure we have positives and negatives. So we have going to the left, so this is going to be a negative 10. The smaller object is also going to the left, so it's going to be a negative 4. Afterwards, the larger object is moving at 6 to the left, oh, so that's another negative. So we have a small, slow object that's being rear-ended by a larger, faster object. The smaller one then is going to get catapulted faster in its direction, and the larger object is going to slow down just a little bit. So here's our equation. Big MV plus little mv equals big MV prime plus little mv prime. Big MV, we have 20 times negative 10. And then we have 14 times 4 is equal to 20 times negative 6 plus 14 times the unknown. <coughs> On the left-hand side here, if you do all that math, you'll get negative 256. And on the right-hand side, negative 120 plus 14v prime. Add 120 to both sides. Divide by 14. Now remember that this V prime, it could be written down as final velocity VF. We've done that kind of a thing before. I just wanted to expose you to um, other kinds of notation. Who knows what you'll see in life. Purpose of the day is to find the forces involved in collisions. So with this equation here, we just have velocities that we're finding. How fast will it be after the collision? Now it's what's the force that was involved in the collision. Again, police and other investigators can use this in real life. You'll be able to predict the ending velocity when an object is pushed with a certain force. Um, change this homework to be 59 if it's incorrect in your packet. And the next quiz is actually day 64. Remember Newton's second law, F equals MA. We're going to twist this around a little bit. This A, remember, can be rewritten as the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. And so that's where we got this hunk. The F stays the same. The equals is the same. The mass is the same. Just changing the A to be the fraction. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by T. So I get FT equals M final velocity minus initial velocity. This FT is kind of special. We call it impulse. And so we refer to the whole thing as the impulse equation. Let's use it then in this situation. In a three-second collision, a 10,000 kilogram truck goes to the right and slows from 30 to 25. So it was hit head-on in some way. How much force was exerted on the truck? Ft equals m vf minus <coughs> vi. We are looking for the force, so that stays the letter. The time is three seconds. The mass is ten thousand. The final velocity is the twenty-five. The initial velocity is thirty. Twenty-five minus thirty is negative five. Negative five times ten thousand is negative fifty thousand. Divide both sides by three. So the force turns out to be a negative sixteen thousand six hundred sixty-six. The negative tells us the direction. So it is going to the left. And that kind of makes sense. 
the truck was going to the right and is slowing down, so that must mean that you're pushing on it to the left. Questions there? And next page. Let's develop this equation a bit more. Okay, here's the same impulse equation. But now we're going to distribute this m through the parentheses. So we have m times the final velocity and the mass times the initial velocity. And we know that mass times velocity is momentum. So mass times final velocity, that quantity is the final momentum. Mass times the initial velocity is the initial momentum. Subtract the two. And whenever you have the final thing minus the initial thing, that's the change in thing. So the change in momentum is on the right-hand side. Impulse is equal to the change of momentum. We can use this then to figure out what combination of force and time will cause bigger changes in an object's momentum. In each equation, or each question, choose which combination of force and time will lead to the biggest change in momentum. Okay, if you want to make the biggest impact, the biggest change, would you push on something with a five newton force for three seconds, or a slightly smaller force for a longer time? Hmm. At first, that might be kind of hard to figure out, but it's really, really easy. You just multiply force times time. So five times three, and over here, four times four. These numbers are equal to the change in momentum. So this changed momentum by 15. This one changed it by 16. This is the bigger change in momentum. That's easy. Number two. You do it yourself right now. What's your answer? What's your answer? What's your answer? Brandon, for number two, which one do you choose? Uh, still working on it. Still working on it? Okay. Patrick, I'll come back to you, Brandon. Okay. Patrick said that one. Brandon, do you agree? I do agree. Yep, this is going to be a quantity of 12 for the delta P. This one's only 10. This one's only 10. So the three newton force, even though it's a smaller force, because it's acting for a longer time, it will give you more um, change. Number three, go ahead and do that one. Lily, what do you think? All right. I'll come back to you, Lily. Um, let's see here. Grant. Okay, this one here in the middle. Lily, Grant says this one. Yep, 4 times 9 is 36, but over here we have 30, and over here we have 27, so that's the bigger one. Can't get much easier than that now, can we? All right, number 4. Uh, how many people are in baseball? How about golf, tennis, softball, um, soccer? Okay. Do they talk about following through with your kicks? Okay. So, um, this is an example to show you the effectiveness of following through on a swing. The numbers here, as far as I know, are pretty accurate. I know for sure that the times that are involved... Um, and the uh, force came from a website where they actually did some measurements. So these are realistic numbers. We have a 100 kilogram baseball batter using a 3 kilogram bat. That's just like a 6 pound bat. Is that a little bit too big? Or do they have 6 pound bats? I don't know. doesn't matter. They exert a 3,000 newton force to the right on a 1 half kilogram softball. The ball is going to the left at 40. That's the pitch. The pitch is coming at you to the left at 40 meters per second. Um, 
The batter does not follow through with the swings like a butt bunt, so the contact time is .007. What is the resulting speed of the baseball? So FT, M, VF minus VI, the impulse equation. Now we have lots of things going on here. We have a bat being swung, we have a ball being pitched, we have a, a softball player just standing there. We have three objects in the story problem. We're using this equation. Do not think that just because we have multiple objects you're going to be using the collision equation, the big MV plus little MV equals blah, blah, blah. Here's a case where multiple objects give us a different equation. Okay, the force is uh, 300, 3,000 newtons, and it says that it's going to the right. The bat is swinging to the right, so that's going to be a positive force. The time, 0 0.007 seconds. The mass, I have a 100 kilogram, 3 kilogram, and a half a kilogram. Which one goes into this equation for mass? Hmm, it's not obvious at all. But think about what the other numbers are that we're going to put into this equation. The other numbers are for what object? The other numbers that we're going to be putting in are the Vs. We know the velocity of the, of the ball initially is 40. We don't know the velocity of anything else really here. So this is for the baseball the resulting speed of the baseball in the story problem. So we need the mass of the baseball, half. VF is what we're looking for. It stays a letter. And VI, 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 VI is the 40 to the left. So I have a minus sign, a subtraction sign from the equation. Now I need another negative to indicate the leftward direction. Double sign. Warning, warning. On the right-hand side, we have 21. On the right-hand side, I'm going to do two things at the same time. Watch out. Brace yourself. I'm going to multiply through by the one-half, distribute that, and at the same time, I'm going to turn this double negative into a plus. So I have one-half VF plus 20. Subtract off 20 from both sides. Uh, let's see, I'm going to have to write down here. 1 is equal to 1 half VF. To get the VF by itself, I could multiply both sides by 2. I could divide both sides by 1 half. Either way, I get the same answer, that the final velocity is 2 meters per second. That's about 4.5 miles an hour. A jogging speed. A fast walk is three meters or three miles per hour. So four miles per hour, a little jog. Okay, that's about like a bunt, right? You're not going to get the ball very far. Now, suppose the batter follows through with the swing. This results in the contact time being point zero zero nine seconds. This doesn't increase isn't much increase in time. Only two thousandths of a second longer. That's not much time. What is resulting speed of the ball? FT equals M VF minus VI. Let's put in the numbers and let's find out. It's surprising. <coughs> At least to me it's surprising. The force is the exact same swing we're just following through this time. The contact time is different, 0 .009. The mass of the ball is the same. We're looking for the final velocity minus the pitch is the same. It's still the negative 40 pitch coming at you. On the left-hand side, that turns out to be 27. Again, distributing the 1 half to the V and to the double negative 40, I get 1 half VF plus 20 again, just like before. Subtract off 20 from both sides.
divide both sides by one half or multiply both sides by two and I get 14 that's meters per second if I put that in miles per hour it's about 31.5 Ethan, do I have permission to throw a softball at you at 31.5 miles per hour and hit you in the forehead? No, that would hurt. That's really significant velocity. That's fast enough to get out of the infield. Okay, you have a line drive, you're going to get on first base. Yoo-hoo! Just by following through with another two thousandths of a second contact time. So I'm going to imagine the same thing happens with your soccer kicking, golf swings, Tennis racket swings. When I first heard the coaches yell at players, including me, follow through, I thought, what difference does it make? When I hit the ball with the baseball bat, I just hear a clink, whether I swing all the way through or not. It's just clink. That's the same. Well, the clink is .002 seconds longer here, and it does make a big difference. All righty.